my topic will be about tendon transfers. And there are several options for non-repairable rotated cuff tears, uh, as we know. And I will be focusing on the latissimus dorsi transfer uh, in these transfers. First of all, I would like to do some definitions like my colleagues. First of all, massive rotative cuff tear means a rupture of tendons more than two and retraction of the uh, tendon must be more than five centimeters. And these tears includes uh, 30 to 40 percentages of all tears and atrophy and fatty degeneration are uh, really important issues. And the most important thing about these massive re tears are re-rupture rates may uh, be up to 70 percentages. And uh, what about non-repairable tears? When can, can we do not, uh, cannot make any repair? According to Gerber, uh, excessive tension during fixation, uh, sorry, excessive tension during fixation uh, at 60 degrees of abduction means non-repairable uh, rotator cuff tears. And these tears include 12 per percentages of posterior superior tears. And I need to make a definition about the pseudoparalysis. As all we know, uh, chronically, if the uh, abduction or elevation is less than 90 degrees, we call it the pseudoparalysis. And uh, this is important uh, because of the tear involvement. In type T tears, according to Colin, uh, we only see three percentages of pseudoparalysis, but this ratio increases up to 33 percentages in type E tiers, including teres minor. And if you look at the examination, external leg sign and home blower signs are important. Uh, and especially if you have a teres minor tier, uh, you can see a home blower sign. X-ray is an, another important issue. Uh, uh, we see a uh, super migration uh, of the humeral hat and the acromiohumeral distance may be less than seven millimeters. And this means uh, an infraspinatus tear uh, in this kind of X-rays, but uh, we cannot get standard X-rays every time. Uh, we must be careful about that. Uh, acromion erosion is uh, another uh, X-ray sign and uh, acetabulization uh, shows us a strong predictor for non-repairable tears of the rotator cuff. If you look at the MRI, uh, as you see here in go to layer three and four, uh, 43 percentages of these uh, tears are non-repairable, but this ratio decreases just six percentages when you have a go to layer zero, one, or two. Tangent sign is another uh, important uh, view in MRIs. If you have a positive tangent sign, then uh, you, you can have a 30 percentages of non-repairable tear. And uh, this ratio decreases to six percentages when you haven't got uh, haven't a tangent sign. Uh, while doing a decision, uh, age, tendon quality, retraction, implant costs, and experience of surgeon are really important. After these evaluations, MRIs, X-rays, uh, we need to con consider these, uh, these things. What about the ideal patient? Uh, we can give an answer to this question for example, if you have a high demand patient and with a, a intact subscapularis, uh, and a, if you have an external leg sign, and if you have a 90 or 100 degrees of abduction, uh, you can be an ideal patient for latissimus dorsi transfer. Uh, you mustn't be a pseudoparalytic. Uh, and if you have a failure after rotator cuff surgery, you are also a really good ideal patient. When do we avoid from the surgery? If you have a deltoid insufficiency or axillary nerve deficit, uh, if you have a subscapular tear, advanced arthrosis, or frozen shoulder, these are contraindications for this kind of surgery. 
Uh, Terence minor tear or fat degeneration is also a relative contraindication for Lutzen's dorsi tendon transfer. Uh, I would like to give some words about the Lutzen's dorsi. It's an internal rotator, as all we know, and also it's an uh, adductor of the shoulder. And thoracodosal artery and nerve supplies this muscle or nerve uh, tendon. What's our goals? What are our goals? according to biomechanics, the most important one to maintain posterior force coupling and also to gain external rotation with active contraction. Tenodesis effect is also another important issue to depress the humeral head. And also uh, this transfer, that uh, Latsim's transfer, acts like a fulcrum for the deltoid support, as you see in this schema. Uh, Firstly, uh, Gerber in 1988 performed this surgery and performed this study for non repairable posterior superior rotator cuff tears in 14 patients and had a 80 percentages of good or excellent results for the patients with external rotation deficit and abduction deficit. In 2006, also Gerber uh, made another study with uh, 69 patients with a mean follow-up of 52 months. And they found inferior results uh, in patients with terrace minor fatty degeneration. And if you have a subscapular insufficiency, also they had inferior results. Uh, Warner uh, also answered this question. Do we do a primary uh, surgery or a salvage tendon transfer for these patients. If you do a salvage reconstruction, uh, you can have an inferior results when compared with the primary uh, with a less satisfaction and functional scores. Also, we have some, we may have some complications like deltoid rupture and Lutzen's dorsi re-ruptures. I would like to show you two patients. Uh, this patient is uh, 52 years old. Uh, with a rotator cuff tear, we perform the repair, uh, as you see in this video. This is the index surgery. And he, he was a really heavy smoker with a three packages of cigarettes daily. After this surgery, after five months, fifth month, he came back with a re-tear uh, with the impaired overhead function, pain and external leg, leg sign. Uh, this is the MRI. And we performed uh, Latsum's dorsi tendon transfer uh, for these patients. You see the uh, technical details here, Krakow sutures. And this uh, was the pedicles. There mustn't be no tension uh, on pedicles, as you see here, with a careful dissection. And the tendon excursion is also important. It must be between deltoid and triceps muscles. And you see the insertion site here on the right up. Uh, the footprint must be uh, closed uh, up to subscapularis uh, tendon. And you, you need to use these kinds of ceilings for a while after the surgery. This is the post transfer, uh, last transfer for and a half month. As you see here, he has a, a supple range of motion with full abduction and he has no external rotation uh, leg sign here. Uh, I would like to give you another patient example. He was a 46 years old patient with a rotator cuff tear. In an uh, outer center, they performed the uh, rotator cuff repair here. You see the anchors. And he came uh, us with an abduction deficit and a, a significant uh, external leg sign. Uh, the position is uh, semi lateral decubitus, as you see here. We, uh, we used the Krakow sutures again. We also used uh, Latsum's dorsi and Terrace Major for the reinforcement of the tendon transfer. It's not uh, necessary, but uh, you can also add Terrace Major for the reinforcement. After three and a half months, on the left side, as you see, this uh, patient has still some problems with abduction. 
but uh, on the right side, as you see here, when he triggers his Latsinus dorsi transfer with a J maneuver, he can uh, abduct or elevate his arm easily. Uh, these patients must be uh, educated about this J maneuver. Uh, as, you, uh, as I described before, the Latsinus dorsi is an internal rotator and the abductor. And uh, we are aiming to abduct or elevate the arm uh, with the triggering the abduction position. Starting with the abduction and finishing it on abduction. As a summary, that seems dorsi is a good choice for non-repayable tears on suitable patients, but, but uh, careful dissection and technique must be carried out and uh, proper rehabilitation is mandatory after these kind of surgeries. Thanks.